All right, in this, um, in this lab, we'll be working towards creating what you see here, which is a, an accordion widget, a very simple accordion widget. I sort of get your feet wet in, in JavaScript development. All right, so it uses some very basic JavaScript and it shows you how JavaScript is able to interact with the DOM, the document object model, dynamically to manipulate the CSS properties of our elements. So you'll find that um, at the end of the, of the lab, we'll be creating something that looks like this, which um, um, is, is it's a very, very basic, very um, um, simple accordion widget. We can enhance this a bit. Some accordion widgets have um, this automatic collapse feature. So for instance, it only allows only one tab to be displayed at a time. But this particular one will just um, use a simple function that will dynamically adjust the CSS style property of HTML elements um, to give us this progressive disclosure effect that we see here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create. Um, we're going to find a folder and we're going to create these few files. Um, we, we're going to create our HTML document first of all, which is accordion.html. We just name it that, and we are going to throw in a style.css as well. So as you notice here, this is already styled up. So we're going to use an external CSS document to style this, all right, to give it that appearance that you see there. So once you have your files created, accordion.html and style.css, just open them up in your favorite editor. So we're looking at the, the starting uh, point of our accordion.html, which is basically an HTML template, all right? You can recognize the, the familiar tags, HTML, head and body, okay, and the title. So one of the first things that we need to do when, when creating widgets is to define the structure of our widget. Obviously we'll have to start there because JavaScript can't necessarily come into the picture unless it's able to identify elements to manipulate, all right? So it needs to, it needs to be able to attach itself and respond to a particular um, element. And the elements are defined within the structure of the document. So this is basically where we're gonna start. So first up, we're going to link in our CSS document by just using the link element, all right? And since the files are next to each other, the relative path is the file name in itself, style.css, okay? And we'll head to that style.css in a bit just to throw in some styles that'll make it look like what we saw earlier, all right? The next thing that we'll do is start to define the, the, the region that represents the widget itself, all right? And we've used the div here divs are very popular for this so we use a div to define our accordion widget where it starts and ends and we give it an id accordion so that we can identify it not only to our style sheet but maybe later on down the line to any javascript function that may need to access it through the dom to do some dynamic manipulation so within our div that represents our accordion the idea with the accordion is that it has areas i'll go back to the to the um to the structure here it has areas of a couple of elements the first of which is the element that represents the top the clickable top all right you'll see these elements with the names academics people research about us so this in itself can be represented as a div element and when we expand it we see another element which contains the content related to that particular tab so the structure itself will contain the top and the content and um, we have to do something particular to these to be able to link it to JavaScript in itself one of the few things would be to identify each tab uniquely and attach it to an event and we'll get into events JavaScript clickable events on click events for instance and um, each content section will have to be uniquely identified as well but each content section as you can see here it loads without the content sections visible so each content section will have to be initialized to be invisible and we'll see how we can do this in a bit all right so let's proceed so this what was thrown in here um, is our is our tab all right and we're using an anchor tag for this and um, we've already assigned it a class tab so this is this is mainly for styling purposes we're using the href but not to go to a particular URL, we're using the href to trigger a JavaScript function, which we haven't written yet, but our JavaScript function is going to be named shide, all right, for show hide, all right, it's like a toggle function, 
which when activated will either show or hide a particular region that we specified. So in this case, since this tab represents academics, we supply already an argument to identify the section that needs to be shown or hidden. Um, and that section's name is academics, where we haven't actually thrown in the element which represents that section as yet. So this entire element here represents a clickable tab, all right, already linked to uh, a JavaScript function that will dynamically toggle the visibility of the content section related to the tab, all right? So the content section now looks something like this. The content section is given an ID, and this is very important because that ID helps JavaScript to uniquely identify the element that it will be dynamically manipulating whenever that function s hide is triggered. All right. So this particular ID here is academics, and you can see that it corresponds with the argument supplied to the s hide, the s hide function of the tab. All right. It's also given a, a class called tab content for styling purposes only. And like I mentioned to you earlier, these content sections are hidden by default. And the way that we can get this done is by using a style attribute. Remember the style attribute? And the property display and the value none. So once we have display none, the HTML uh, document, basically when rendered in the browser, will not render these elements which have the styling attribute um, of display none. All right. So within this div itself, we can throw as much content as we wish within the section um, that, re that relates to academics. So what you find is that this essentially represents a structure that we'll need. And we can repeat this as many times as we'd like for other tabs and other tab content sections that will go into our accordion widget, as you can see here. All right? So we've created some other sections, people, and the related tab content section for people. We've created a, another section, research, and a related top content section for research, about us, and so on. But for each section, you notice that the tab is given a different name, a different label, of course, uh, to uniquely identify it. But the, the argument of the s height function changes as well. And this is particularly important because each tab will control up to one content section when clicked. So you don't want to, we don't necessarily want the academics tab expanding the about us uh, content section at the bottom. So you'll understand why these two names have to correspond that you see here, all right? So you'll see that the IDs come in handy in terms of uniquely identifying and binding our sections to clickable elements within the document itself, all right? So we see people, and this particular s height function will look for people and expand it or contract it whenever this particular hyperlink, this particular anchor tag is clicked. All right? Same thing goes for research. We have an ID research here, and the argument is research. Same thing for about us. Argument is about us. All right? So what we're going to do now is go to our style document, style.css, and we're going to throw some styling information in to make it look much like uh, what we see here. So you'll notice that it has a gray sort of border around it. So the container itself is sort of gray. The font is different, right? It's not the default Times New Roman font and so on. So we're going to throw some styling information in to make it look like what we see here. All right, padding and all and so forth. So within the, the style sheet that we have linked to our document already, we'll begin by throwing some information in the body element uh, selector. So what this body element selector does is it controls everything within the document. So all of the styling information that you place within here will govern everything within the viewable document itself unless it's overridden somewhere else. So what we're basically throwing in the body is just uh, the font family, what type of font we're going to use in our widget. And we're going to start with Arial. If, it, if Arial isn't available, then we'll move to Helvetica. And, and we can continue to, to list out fonts to fall back on if the local operating system, if the local browser is unable to find that font, right? You'll also notice that the selectors that we've already created in our document are available in the style sheet as read already. I went ahead and, and, and got this done. So we see the, the ID selector accordion, the class selector tab, and the class selector tab content. We also see 
a hover selector for our tab selector itself. So this would sort of um, you can you can sort of draw the the connections right away. This hover effect that you see here will be governed by that particular hover selector you saw earlier. Well, we go, we're going to go through line by line in this regard. So for the accordion um, selector here, you'll notice that the background that we see here, which is basically the main container for the accordion, is sort of gray. This line that was just thrown in here governs that. So this gives it a nice gray background. Then we want the accordion not to take up 100% of the viewable space. We want it to just be like about uh, 30 pixels, 300 pixels rather. And in this regard, we just throw a weight in. And we say our accordion is going to be a maximum of 300 pixels. We're, we're not going to have it scale beyond that. It's going to be by default 300 pixels. Um, you'll notice that the accordion itself, all of the content within the accordion, is off the edges of the accordion within it. And that's controlled by the padding. So you'll find that 10 pixels away from the edge of the accordion container itself, the content will begin. And this padding value basically specifies this. All right. So now we can head over to our tab selector. And our tab selector, remember our tabs represent these areas that are clickable. All right. Our hyperlinks, or anchor tags rather, I should say, that are clickable. So you'll notice that these clickable areas are by default in a, in a block arrangement they have sort of a white border around them and the text is sort of centered so you want to create that sort of effect that styling so we'll begin by aligning the text to center so text to line center does that for us and we're gonna tell it to have sort of a blue a dark blue background by using this this property and the value that you see there and then we're gonna say you know we want you to display as a block which means basically to take up as much space as you possibly can from left to right right uh, as opposed to just enough space to show the content within it. All right, so display block does that. And color is set to white, so you'll notice that the font itself, all the content, the text within the, the tab itself is white. So that particular property does that. And by default, this is, a, this is an anchor tag. And anchor tags by default have an underline type of uh, decoration. So we want to remove that. We want to. We don't want to make it look like an anchor tag, so to speak. We want to make it look like a clickable accordion tab. So we say text decoration none, and that removes the um, the underline, the default underline. All right. So now we can move to um, let's say padding it up a bit. So you'll notice that you know the text is a little bit off the edges, just to give it that effect, because you know you have an undesired in the undesired effect when content is mashed up against the edges of a container. So you want to offset that a bit by throwing in a padding value. So padding 2px basically means that two pixels will be padded on every side of that particular container so that the content will be two pixels away from the edges of the container of this element. All right. And then finally we add our, our white border by using um, this compound value. 1px means the width or the thickness of the border. Solid means the type of border, whether it's um, solid, dashed, or dotted, for instance. And hash, the, the hex value there, specifies white as a color. All right, so now we're gonna move to the, the hover effect of these tabs. So you'll notice that when we hover over the tab, the background changes to sort of a gray, and the text changes to sort of a black, all right? So we can just throw those specific properties in with the specific values um, we just threw in background um, this hex value represents a, a gray color and color here represents black all right so the text is going to be changed to black from white and the background is going to be changed to sort of a gray from a dark blue only when the, the mouse cursor hovers over the element in question all right so we're going to continue by styling the top content section all right, and the top content section is this area here with the dashed border and the areas that have the content that are displayed when a tab is clicked on. All right, so all of these areas will be styled by this top content selector. So we begin by specifying a white background. All right, as you can see here, the background for the top content sections um, is white. and 
and then we can throw in a dash bar there. All right. So we we use instead of um, solid as before, we use dashed to sort of give it that dashed barter appearance. All right. And it's a black dash border specified by that hex value there. And we specify a padding as well because we don't want the content mashed up against the, 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 the edges of the, co the container itself. So we specify fi five pixels all around the content. Okay. And then margin here. Margin is sort of like padding, but it, it, it sort of specifies the spacing on the outside of the element. So you'll notice that these section areas are offset from the tabs just a bit they're not mashed up against it and that uh, is a result of specifying a margin value so the margin value sort of sets the outer spacing or the spacing between the element itself and the rest of the elements around it all right so our margin five pixels just sets it off from the next element next to it by five pixels on the top right bottom and left sides all right and then we, we start to mess with the font size there. We want to make it a bit bigger. So we use uh, 1.3 EM. All right. And um, once that's done, our styling is done. So this is basically all we need to style our accordion widget, as you can see here. And uh, I'll head back over to our HTML document. So right now, there's, there's absolutely nothing dynamic going on. It's just a nice looking widget, as you can see here. Um, as a matter of fact, with all of the information in place it'll look like this you'll have this hover effect but when we click on it nothing will happen all right because JavaScript isn't in place yet so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some JavaScript in place we're gonna create that s hide function that I mentioned earlier and you'll see how we're able to manipulate aspects of this document dynamically to create that accordion disclosure effect all right so what we're gonna do right now is start in our head section we're gonna open a script tag and that's where we're going to throw all of our JavaScript code um, to do to, to specify our function. And within that script tag, we'll start the function. JavaScript functions begin with the name function. Uh, we give it a name and we give it um, a parameter. So our parameter variable ID represents the name, for instance, of the element that must be toggled from visible to invisible, depending on whenever what state it's in, basically. So that's the idea of, of toggling. All right, so within it, we begin, first of all, by grabbing that element in question. So the line that's thrown in here is um, just really rudimentary JavaScript. Document represents the current HTML document. So you can think of document as the DOM or a reference to the DOM or a part of the DOM. All right, And you'll find that the DOM has a bunch of functions and, and other um, let's say properties that you're able to make use of in terms of getting information from the HTML document and specifying information to be dynamically updated in the HTML document. All right. So what this statement does is it looks inside of the document to find an element with by the ID of ID. All right. So you can imagine that, for instance, when this tab is clicked on. And S hide is supplied the value academics. It goes to the function. ID now holds the value academics. And when this statement is called, academics is specified here. All right. And what JavaScript does is it looks inside a document to find an element by the ID academics. So it looks and looks and looks and it eventually finds it here because this has the ID academics and it returns an object based representation of this HTML element and stores it inside of that variable div. Now we'll need an object based representation of that element because JavaScript sort of operates on a different level. It's not at the same level of um, the, the static HTML of, of the structural HTML I should say. It's more of a behavioral level so it's able to look into an object much better than it's able to look into markup per se. So this is why it's very important for Java to work at the level of objects per se. I know objects might be a little um, new to you, but we'll get into it eventually. So what you basically need to understand is that inside of div, right, may be 
one of these particular elements that you see here. Let's imagine we're, we're using the same scenario that academics, the academics tab is clicked. So that means that this particular div in its object form is inside of this variable called div. All right? What that means is that everything that describes the div in the HTML document, its ID, its class, its style, its style properties, its style values, even its content is represented as an object inside of div. Right? And when it's done that way, we can dynamically manipulate anything of it in JavaScript. Right? So what we're doing right now is we, we want to dynamically manipulate this part of it. All right, this part right here, where it says style display colon none. Now, why we need to manipulate it? We need to manipulate it because display colon none actually hides the element. But we want to toggle that. We want to make sure that whether if the element is hidden, we want to show it. Otherwise, we want to hide it. So that's sort of toggling. We're checking the state of the element, of the style value, the display value rather, of the style attribute. And depending on that value, whether it's none or something other than none, we are going to set it either to none or basically we're going to set it to the opposite state or opposite value that represents its state. All right? So let's proceed now uh, and it'll become clearer. So this is what I mean. So what we're doing right now is we are referencing information on our element. Let's imagine that it's the same element that we're looking at. We're referencing information on our element. And like I mentioned, everything that's inside of this element can be accessed through JavaScript's object representation of that element. So if we want to access the display property inside of the element, we have to look inside of the element, find the style attribute, all right? You see that? Then look inside of the style attribute, find the display property, you see that? And then we're able to compare the value of that to none for instance so we're actually testing to see whether the content is hidden or not that's what we're doing there so if if that's the case then we want to show it so basically we're gonna throw something like this in place so we set the display properties value to absolutely nothing and now we get the job done we can store something else in there but that will get the job done all right so we can proceed by um, throwing in an else condition if it's actually visible then we want to hide it. And in that regard, we can throw something like this in place. All right? So we're actually setting the display value to none. If it's actually visible, if the display value is this, we're going to set it to none. If the display value is none, we're going to set it to this. And that should sort of give that toggling effect between visible and invisible. All right? All right, so once that's in place, your accordion widget is done. Everything is hooked up and it should work just the way you see it here.